Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a question from the IB Chemistry Paper 2 HL from the May 2019 batch, and this is from Time Zone 1. So in this question, they've asked us, benzoic acid, C6H5COOH, is another derivative of benzene. Identify the wave number of one peak in the IR spectrum of benzoic acid using section 26 of the data booklet. Now, what do we use the IR spectrum for? Well, we use the IR spectrum to determine which functional groups are present in an organic compound. Now, if you flip to 26, section 26 of your data booklet, you'll see a lot of numbers and you'll see different bonds, you'll see the organic molecules and you'll see the wave number at which they're identified at. Now, for benzoic acid, we know that, well, from the name that it's an acid and we can see clearly from this that there's a Ku group present. So it looks something like this. So this carboxylic group over here, this is the functional group for benzoic acid. And this is what we're gonna focus on. So now if you look at your data booklet, you'll see that there is a C to double bond, the C, there's a carbon double bonded to oxygen. And that has a wave number of 1,700 to 1,750 centimeters. And then the bond of oxygen to hydrogen, which is also the hydroxyl group, which is also present in the carboxylic acid, has a wavelength between 2,500, oops, sorry, and 3,000 centimeters. Now, notice that I that there are two bonds, or there are two different values shown for the O to H bond. There is one which is present in alcohols and phenols, and there is one which is, which is present in carboxylic acids. And in the data booklet, it is specified which is which. So that's why I have chosen the one for carboxylic acids, because of course we're dealing with a carboxylic acid over here. So be very careful when you do that, don't mix those two up. Now, from these two values, you can choose to put any wavelength, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna to choose to put 1,700. You can choose to put something else as long as it is between this range. Any number between this range or this range is all right. And you only have to put one. So I'm just gonna put 1,700 centimeters. Don't forget the units. That's it for that question. Now, next part. Identify the spectroscopic technique that is used to measure the bond lengths in solid benzoic acid. Now. How do you measure bond lengths? You only have to know the name of the technique. It's called X-ray crystallography. That's all you have to know. You don't have to know anything else about this technique. You don't have to know any details. You just need to know that it is used to measure bond lengths. That's it. Next question. C, outline one piece of physical evidence for the structure of benzene ring. Now the benzene ring has been, the, or the structure rather of the benzene ring has been a debate in the scientific community for quite some time, right? The structure has been changed. It's been reevaluated. Evidence has come up to falsify certain structures and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna give you a brief background about this benzene ring and why there is such a debate around it. So the benzene ring was actually first isolated in 1825 by a scientist by the name of Michael Faraday. And the formula of benzene is pretty straightforward. It's just C6H5, right? And this has been known for a very long time. Sorry, I mean C6H6, my bad, right? And this has been known for a very long time. However, the problem comes when we start talking about its structure. The structure is what is quite an enigma or well has been quite an enigma in the scientific community. But the original structure, the very first structure was proposed by a scientist whose name was Kekul. And this is what he proposed the structure to be. So we know that there are six carbons, right? And he suggested that there are alternating double bonds. So there's a double bond here. It's alternating, so we don't put a double bond here. There's a double bond here. We don't put one here. And we put one here instead. And of course, there are the hydrogens attached to each carbon.
And if you look at the structure, it makes perfect sense, right? Because each carbon, uh, remember carbon has a valency of four, meaning it has four electrons in its valence shell. So it can form four bonds and it needs to form four bonds to become stable. So one, two, three, four, each carbon has four bonds. And that's why the it explains how the structure is formed and it explains why the structure is stable. And well, that's it, right? It makes perfect sense. Well, was that the end of the story? No, not at all. This structure was accepted for many years and many people thought this was true, but uh, with time and with the advent of modern technology, people started doing further tests on this stru structure. And eventually there was strong evidence, both physical and chemical evidence, which falsified this structure. Eventually this structure was discarded and it is now considered as the wrong structure. And now an alternative structure has been proposed. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. It's not too different to this, but there is one very key element which is not present in this structure that was in Kekyo's. And that is the presence of the alternating double bonds. Rather than the alternating double bonds, there is this circle that they draw in the middle. What is this circle? This circle basically represents a delocalized electron cloud that is over this benzene structure. What do I mean by that? Well, they have said that the double bonds don't exist. That means that each carbon is only forming three bonds. And that means that each carbon also has one additional electron left, right? It's not using this electron for anything. But that makes this structure very unstable because none of the carbons are stable. So where does it get the stability from? Well, it gets the stability from these six electrons when they come together or they combine to form a ring. And this is called a delocalized ring. And what does that mean? A delocalized ring is basically a system of electrons which are shared between three or more atoms. So these six electrons are not confined to this double bond or this double bond or this double bond. Rather, they're shared between each and every single one of the six carbon atoms. And each carbon atom contributes one electron to it. And these six electrons help to maintain the stability of the benzene structure, right? And instead, of the electrons, like I said before, just being confined between a double bond, they are now spread over and shared between the six carbon atoms. Now, just for definition, delocalized delocalization is just when electrons, I'm just gonna actually symbol electrons shared between three or more atoms. And you can see why this is called a delocalized ring because well, obviously each electron is being shared between six carbon atoms, right? Each of these six electrons is being shared between six carbon atoms. And therefore it's called a delocalized electron system or a delocalized electron ring. Now, how did people even arrive to this conclusion? It's so random, right? You have a good, you have a perfectly good structure. You know, it makes complete sense on the book, but why would anyone just wake up one day and think, oh, that's wrong. I'm going to change it to this. Well, nobody would do it without evidence. And there was strong evidence pointing to the fact that Kekul's structure, which I showed you earlier, was wrong. And in this question, they've asked us to just outline one piece of physical evidence for the structure of the benzene ring. And by the structure, they mean this structure, the correct, which is now considered as the correct structure. And like I said, there were two categories of evidence that falsified Kekul's structure. One was physical and one was chemical, but they've only asked us about physical. So we're not gonna look at chemical today. Physical evidence. Well, what was that physical evidence? One was the bond length of the carbon to carbon atoms in the benzene structure. So scientists measured this, this bond length between the carbon to carbon atom. They measured the bond length. And what they found was quite surprising. They found out that all the, the carbon to carbon bond lengths 
were equal to each other. And that really goes against what Kekul's structure showed us, right? Because Kekul's structure had alternating double bonds, right? It had three double bonds. So if there are three double bonds, we should expect that three of the six bonds that we measure in the benzene ring should be shorter than the others. Because remember, uh, wait, I'm just gonna create some space here. Because remember, double bonds, DB, are short, single bonds are long, and of course, triple bonds are the shortest. But we didn't see anything like that. All the carbon to carbon bonds were equal. And in addition to that, the length of the carbon to carbon bond in the benzene ring wasn't the length of a single bond either. And neither was it the length of a double bond. It was actually in between these two. So it wasn't as long as a single bond, but yet it wasn't as short as a double bond. And in summary, they realized that there are no double bonds present in the benzene ring. Rather, it's a delocalized system of electrons, which makes the bond from carbon to carbon not as long as a single bond, but yet it's not as short as a double bond either. And if you would like to really see the statistics and the exact numbers of um, how long the bonds are, you can go and search it up online. You know, you have plenty of data and you'd see what I mean. Not as long as a single bond and not as long as a double bond. So in this question, you can basically say that the carbon to carbon bond length was intermediate. So this, this bonds, they described these bonds in the benzene ring as intermediate bonds. And of course, um, you know, it's really hard for me to write long sentences on this, but you get the idea. I've done all the explanation. So you can write that the carbon to carbon bond length in the benzene structure ring was intermediate. It wasn't as short as a double bond, yet it wasn't as long as a single bond. And this is a physical piece of evidence because we're literally measuring something, right? We're measuring bonds. So it's not chemical, it's physical. Well, that's it for this question. Hopefully you've understood the whole concept and you've enjoyed the little story that I gave you. Let's move on to the next question. B, draw the structure of the conjugate base of benzoic acid showing all the atoms and all the bonds. Now, benzoic acid looks something like this, right? I'm just gonna draw it. Benzoic acid looks like this. And we know that it has the little ring in the center, like I showed you before. Remember, we don't draw the double bonds anymore. That structure has been falsified, but I think IB still accepts it, but I would not recommend you to do it because, well, why do something that's not considered as true anymore, right? So it's really up to you. If you want to draw the double bonds, go ahead and draw it, but you know, you never know when IB changes its rules. So just to stay on the safer side, I would recommend you to draw the structure like this. And you know that there are these hydrogens attached over here to each of the carbon atoms. But since this is benzoic acid, one of the carbon atoms doesn't have a hydrogen. Rather, it has another carbon attached to it. And this, this is the carboxylic functional group. So you see how benzoic acid is. This is benzoic acid. Now, when benzoic acid becomes a conjugate base, it gives off one of its hydrogens. It will give off this hydrogen from the carboxylic group. Please do not make the mistake of, of removing this hydrogen or this hydrogen. That's not correct. The hydrogen is removed from the carboxylic group, which is this, this functional group. This is what makes it an acid, this carboxylic acid group. So this hydrogen is given off. This H plus is given off. And the electron that existed in the bond between O and H, remember there are two electrons over here Basically, oxygen takes both electrons and H plus therefore is given out, not H, H plus is given off. That's what an acid does, right? It's an H plus donator. That's a bronsted Lowry acid. And that therefore, this oxygen gets a negative charge on it. And you can probably see why it gets a negative charge because well, it has one additional electron now. So it, it kind of becomes like an ion. So you have to put that negative charge on it. And that is 
literally the structure of benzoic acid, oh, sorry, the conjugate base of benzoic acid. That's it. Simple, right? That's all you had to do. You just had to um, remove the hydrogen and put a negative sign on the oxygen. That is it. So I'm going to, and let me see if I'm able to shift this structure that I've drawn over here. I'm not sure if I can. Yeah, I don't think I can. But anyways, I think you get the idea. You can see the answer over here. Oh, never mind. Let me just move it. Oh, it's getting really messy. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, um, let me just get this back over here so that you don't get too confused. But you know, you can just rewind the video and you can see how I drew it over there. It's the, it's literally the same thing. It doesn't matter. Hopefully you have understood this concept. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it has been a bit long, but hopefully my stories and my analogies have helped you out. I'll see you in another video with another question. If you have any other question regarding this concept or any other concept, please feel free to let me know on my social media or in the comments or by email. I'm open to helping you through all mediums. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video with another question. Take care.